Welcome to a general overview of working with your LGBTQ clients based on their developmental phase in an effort to improve rapport building and motivation towards goals. Individuals in this population often experience mental health events at a rate about twice as high as the general population. In many cases, depression and anxiety is exacerbated by struggles with identity development. Overuse of substances is frequently higher here as well, especially in adolescents who deal with additional complications around their identity formation. Building rapport with clients is often already complicated by general issues preventing access to care, even while meaning providers can inadvertently create stigma around identity due to assumptions about an individual's process. In some cases, providers can be the only community or support around identity that an individual has while trying to establish a sense of their identity. Motivational interviewing is a foundational support to working with individuals regardless of the provider's profession. The principles are designed to encourage providers to engage individuals in treatment, give focus to the conversation around needs that should be addressed, evoke interest and investment in change, and then develop a collaborative plan for addressing the individual's needs. This approach has been shown to help build rapport quickly, uh, create action steps based on the individual, and really provide an approach to working with someone that is unique and not a cookie cutter. For additional information around this skill set, uh, consider visiting the SAMHSA training at the link below. As part of the motivational interviewing process, it's important to understand an individual's stage of change. This mindset allows providers to ensure that interventions and general interactions are appropriate for the work the individual is ready for. For instance, forcing an individual into a treatment group uh, that does not see them as having a problem can create obstacles if the group is designed for individuals that have committed to changing their circumstances. Similarly, offering an individual who is in an action phase of change basic educational information can lead to a lack of engagement and potentially that person dismissing services as not being relevant to their needs. It's essential to make sure that uh, processes and services provided are appropriate for each individual's readiness. Working with the LGBTQ plus population, it's also important to tailor services to that individual's place in their identity development. Failing to do so can create similar problems to those created by not understanding stages of change. Meeting an individual where they are in their development can lead to profound improvement in providing services with improved rapport, trust, and probably even long-term engagement in programming. Individuals in the confusion stage often struggle with acceptance of self and admitting that their identity may be variant from the norm. Even when presented with evidence that their behaviors may fit into another area of gender or sexual identity, there can be some really strong denial. It's important when working with individuals in this stage to keep information non-judgmental, eliminate any use of labels, and really stay with where the person is. It's especially important to encourage individuals uh, toward engaging communities and connections they may have already established that remain helpful for them. In the comparison stage, individuals are likely to reject comparisons to any group, whether it be the new identity group or even their previous group. Social isolation is often common here and can be particularly risky for individuals struggling with mental health and substance use. Services and providers uh, that encourage individual definitions of self uh, are often welcomed. This can also be a stage of preparation for considering and exploring new communities. So sharing options without insisting that they be utilized can be beneficial. In the tolerance stage, individuals move into a more comfortable place of trying out roles and developing some language. Labeling by others can still potentially be problematic and self-identification can change from one interaction to the next. So someone may come in with one set of labels and then use a completely different set the next time. Providers should be prepared to allow for this kind of open trying on of identity. Any judgment of it can be pretty isolating and shut someone down. 
this is also a good place to offer access to resources, other providers, and community groups that may be more welcomed now for a person in this phase. The acceptance stage marks a transition toward more fully taking on a label uh, and some stability and self-identification. Often individuals here start the quote coming out process um, and have found ways to start creating and identifying uh, safe situations for that to happen. Some individuals are more comfortable being seen as part of a larger community and in public at this point as well. This can be an especially important time for providers to offer some safe space for processing of some fears and emotion around the coming out process up to this point. There can also be some movement backward toward earlier stages should there be some pushback or negative experiences from people in the individual's community at this point. The pride stage is often marked by a more pronounced shift toward acceptance of self in a visible way. Some individuals will be more engaging in their community of choice and even possibly take on an activist role. Services here should be designed around continuing to support engaging the community in healthy ways. Uh, and mental health and substance use providers may find it important to support the process of working through anger and defensiveness of some conflicting social systems that can come up for someone. The final stage of synthesis is often observed as a pretty profound shift towards um, these components becoming a part of identity as opposed to a significant uh, overarching, maybe even all-consuming part of identity. Other roles and aspects of self often become equally, if not more important than sexual or gender identity. Providers at this point can take steps towards uh, acknowledging the shift in some subtle and accepting ways, uh, and clients will often become more open about their needs and other aspects of their life at this point. Maintaining trust becomes a key component of the work going forward, uh, because a break in trust with a provider can potentially move the individual back to some earlier stages of identity development. Each of these slides really provide only a very small sample of considerations to take while working with individuals in these different stages. It's important for providers to consider the larger picture and implications of each stage based on the types of innovations uh, or services that they're wanting to provide. Determining what type of service is being offered and what stages the individuals are being targeted with for them can make a really big difference. For instance, if you're wanting to target testing towards a population of men who have sex with men in the community that are not being addressed, uh, that may not consider themselves being gay, a private pride event is probably not the place to seek out those kind of participants. Uh, you're going to be looking for something where individuals uh, who can feel safe and not have to identify with a particular group uh, can be met. Uh, so something that's going to be more uh, anonymous or uh, have some really strong privacy in place for them. It's also important for providers not to push individuals to get to a later stage of identity development because the provider themselves is at a more open, accepting, or even integrating stage. Um, while many supportive providers are very well-meaning, they can potentially marginalize individuals who are still struggling with self-acceptance if they're pushing them towards those later stages. It's incredibly important that providers continue to develop their skills around cultural awareness and really build empathy when working with clients as they are.